Hi guys, welcome to another episode of the Armourer's Bench. Today we're going to take a look at another very rare HK rifle, the G41. The G41 represents HK's last infantry rifle that used their tried and tested roll delayed blowback action. Introduced in 1981, the G41 encapsulated a number of major improvements, but failed to gain traction and was never widely adopted. In October 1980, following NATO's small arms and ammunition testing during the late 70s, a meeting of NATO armament directors agreed to standardise to the 5.56x45mm round, which had been in favour with the US since the mid-60s. The standardisation agreement, or STANAG 4172, saw NATO standardised to the Belgian SS109 round. At the time, Draft Stanag 4179 proposed adopting the US's 30 round M16 magazines as the standard NATO pattern. While this proposal wasn't ratified, the M16's magazine became the de facto standard for NATO. As we know, at this time HK were engaged in a major engineering project to develop the G11. If you haven't already checked out our videos on the G11, including my disassembly video, check out the links in the description box below. As a result of HK's focus being on the G11, HK's main offering to the 5.56 rifle market at the time was the HK33, a rechambered version of the 7.62x51mm G3 that was developed by Tilo Muller, which was introduced in 1965. The HK33, however, used a proprietary HK magazine and was not compatible with M16 mags. In 1977, the NATO trials began and it became increasingly clear that 5.56 would become universally adopted. So HK began to develop what would become the G41. In 1979, with initial development completed, HK submitted 18 G41s for testing with the West German Army. But it wasn't until 1981 that HK finally introduced the G41 onto the market. While continuing to use the same roller delay blowback operating system as the G3, HK33 and MP5, the G41 embodied a number of improvements. While still using a stamped metal receiver, it used 1mm thick high tensile steel rather than the usual 1.2mm thick steel used in the HK33. This helped to lighten the receiver. The new rifle also used a lighter bolt assembly paired with a new recoil spring which comprised of five wound strands around a central coil rather than using a single coil as in the HK33. This gave it a longer stroke and acted to lower the felt recoil during firing. The G41 however had a higher rate of fire than its predecessor, at around 850 rounds per minute. That's about 100 rounds faster than the HK33. The G41's lower receiver was designed to allow the rifle to feed from Stanag magazines, rather than the HK's earlier proprietary mags. The cocking lever and forward assist were taken from the HK21A1 machine gun, developed for the US Army's SAW trials. HK's sales literature describes the forward assist as low noise, and the manual describes the quiet cocking of the weapon, which involved essentially riding the cocking handle and bolt back into battery, and then pushing the forward assist to lock the action. The system's not quite as low noise as advertised. HK also added a new more triangular polymer foregrip, and added a plastic dust cover to the ejection port, and a spring-loaded folding carrying handle was added near the centre of balance. The G41 has HK's classic drum sight, sighted out to 400 metres. Here we can see mounting points for NATO's standard pattern scope mount, which replaced HK's earlier claw mount system. Importantly, HK also added a last round hold open device, and a bolt release catch on the left side of the receiver, mimicking the M16s. Another important feature of the rifle was the inclusion of a three round burst setting alongside semi and fully automatic. Okay, let's strip the 41 and take a closer look. First we have to remove the two pins at the rear of the receiver, retaining the buttstock. stock. 
Inside the buttstock we can see the buffer assembly. Then we pull the charging handle to the rear so we can pull the bolt and bolt carrier out of the action. The pistol grip assembly isn't retained by a pin like the HK33, so it comes away freely. Here we can see the 41's thicker multi-strand coiled recoil spring. Like the 33, the spring is retained on its guide rod. Here we can see the bolt head and extractor. Here on the side of the bolt carrier we can see the serrations for the forward assist. Here we can see the firing pin, firing pin spring, the locking piece, bolt head, and the bolt carrier. Let's take a closer look at the rifle's receiver. The receiver is stamped 1mm thick steel. Here we can see the spot welds at the rear of the magazine housing for the shelf which the pistol grip assembly slots into. We can also see where the forward assist has been spot welded onto the receiver. If we look in through the ejection port as we pull back the charging handle, we can see the base of the charging rod which acts on the front of the bolt carrier. Here we can see the left hand side of the 41's ambidextrous selector. and a quick look inside the pistol grip assembly of the trigger mechanism and hammer. The G41 could mount a standard G3 bayonet, fit an M16 bipod and had a flash hider designed to enable it to fire NATO standard rifle grenades. The 40mm HK79 underbarrel grenade launcher could also be mounted to all variants of the G41, simply by swapping it out for the polymer forend. HK referred to this setup as the G41 TGS or Tactical Group Support System. The G41 came in a number of variants with designations ranging from A1 to A3. HK offered a standard rifle variant with a fixed butt stock and a version with a collapsing single position stock. These rifles were available with barrels optimised for either the US M193 round or the new Belgian SS109. There was also a shortened G41K model, which had a collapsing stock and a 15 inch barrel, also available with both rifling types. Ok, let's take a look at HK's two 5.56 rifles stripped side by side. With the rifles stripped, we can see their differences and similarities. Both use the same roll delayed blowback action. Both have stamped receivers, and both disassemble in much the same way. The 41, however, has three disassembly pins rather than two. The 41's butt assembly fits inside the receiver rather than over it. We can see the HK33's butt is held in place by a single pin. The trigger pack and pistol grip assembly is hinged by another, while the G41's pistol grip assembly slots into the upper receiver with no retention. The magazine housing for the 41 has been reprofiled for Stenag mags. When we look at the bolts, we can see that while they remain very similar, a number of important changes have been made. The G41's bolt carrier does not have a buffer extension below the recoil spring. It has added serrations for the forward assist, and a number of the geometries on the bolt head and carrier have been altered. The bolt heads are much the same, but the most notable difference is the wound recoil spring of the G41 compared to the 33 single coil that we see here. Let's reassemble the G41. The process is much the same as HK's other roller delay blow-by rifles. First, we reinsert the bolt and bolt carrier assembly.
Then we align and then pivot the pistol grip assembly back into the receiver. Holding it in place and then slotting the buttstock into the rear of the receiver. Pushing against the spring tension of the recoil spring, we then replace the two pins that retain the buttstock in the receiver. And finally a quick function check with the obligatory HK slap. Following NATO's decision to standardise to 5.56, the early 1980s saw a large number of countries looking to replace their aging 762 by 51 mm chambered rifles. Sweden began to look for a 5.56 rifle to replace the AK-4, its licensed version of the G3, in the late 70s. HK could initially only offer the HK-33, but the G41, tested later, was also rejected by the Swedes, in favour of FN's FNC. Italy sought to replace the BM-59 with a more modern rifle, and HK entered into an agreement with Luigi Franchi, which saw them offering both the original HK configuration and develop their own slightly modified version, the Modelo 641. But the bid failed, and the Beretta AR 1790 was selected instead. Similarly, in 1984, Spain decided to move away from the 7.62 cartridge as well, and decided to adopt the indigenously developed Setmi Model L. In 1986, the G41 was also submitted to the Irish Army's trials to replace the FN file, but again it was beaten, this time by the Steyr Org. With the reunification of Germany, shrinking budgets and the cancellation of the G11 project, in the early 1990s the Bundeswehr sought a lighter weight rifle, and HK felt that their HK50 project, in development since the mid-70s, was a better bet than the 41 and the G36 was subsequently adopted in 1997. One of the main issues with the G41 was its weight. It weighed more than its predecessor, the HK33. According to the measurement data compiled by my friend and researcher Nathaniel F, unloaded, the G41 weighs in at 4.31 kilograms, or 9.5 pounds. That's a full pound heavier than the HK33. A contemporary M16A2 weighed 3.39 kilograms or 7.5 pounds, while the Spanish Setmi L, a similar stamped receiver rifle chambered in 5.56, weighed 3.72 kilograms or 8.2 pounds. In comparison, the rifle eventually adopted by the Bundeswehr, the HKG36, weighed 3.13 kilograms or 7.3 pounds. Despite issues with weight, the rifle was considered by a large number of countries, and at least a few orders were made. Photographs of members of the Turkish Gendarmerie's Special Operations Group training with G41s dating from the early 2000s. This may indicate that either Turkey purchased a number of G41s directly from HK, or Turkey's state-owned defence manufacturer MKEK produced an unknown number under licence from HK. At some point in the 1980s, the British Army also tested a small number of G41s, with at least three of these, including this example, remaining in UK collections today. Some of Denmark's special forces reportedly used G41s for a time, while Argentina's special forces have also recently been photographed with both HK G41s and G41A2s, fitted with the TGS underbarrel grenade launcher package. The G41 represents the last evolution of HK's Royal Delayed Blowback Rifles. It comes from a period when HK were developing what they hoped would be the next generation of small arms technology. But with the collapse of the G11 program and the lack of interest in the G41, the company faced financial uncertainty throughout the 1990s. HK's future success would lie in the move away from the Royal Delayed Blowback action towards the increased use of lightweight polymers and a gas-operated rotating bolt system. The G36, despite its issues, has proven to be far more successful than the ill-fated G41. 
Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed this look at one of HK's rarer weapons. Maybe not as rare as the G11, but still really interesting to take a look at. If you enjoyed the video, please consider supporting Tab over on Patreon. We're an entirely viewer supported channel, and your support really helps us continue to make these videos. You can find the link to the Patreon in the description box below. And don't forget to also like, share and subscribe. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.